Hey everybody, Pete Pardo here. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. Today is Monday, September the 24th. We've got a pretty jam-packed show. A lot of really good stuff coming out lately, and we're going to start it off with some U.S. progressive metal by two guys who have been in a couple of really noteworthy bands over the last bunch of years that I'm sure you'll recognize once I start listing the bands. Uh, Zero Hour, Abnormal Thought Patterns, and Synthesis, of course, I'm talking about. Jason and Troy Tipton, and the name of this new project or band they've got going on is uh, called A Dying Planet, and the name of the new album is Facing the Incurable. So who have we got in this band besides that? So we got Troy Tipton on vocals, we got Jason Tipton on guitars and keyboards, Brian Hart on bass, and Marco Bica on drums. You may be asking yourselves, well, why is Troy singing and not playing bass here? So if you haven't heard, uh, over the last, last bunch of years, uh, Troy has actually developed some type of ailment, and I don't know which hand it's on, but he's got a wrist problem that's basically incurable, and it's, it's so bad that he really can't play the bass anymore, which is the basis for the lyrical content on this concept album, again, Facing the Incurable. This is basically Troy's telling of what his life has been, what he's had to deal with uh, mentally and physically over the last couple of years, knowing that because of his injury that he can no longer play bass anymore. So it's pretty heavy stuff. Uh, parts of this album are a little bleak and sad and sorrowful. Uh, some are a little more uplifting because knowing that, you know, there is always a bright, uh, bright light shining light at the end of the tunnel type of thing. Uh, musically, this is uh, as you would expect from the Tipton Brothers, right? So you got loads of incredible, complex, thunderous riffing and gorgeous solos from Jason. The guy's an incredible, incredible talent. The rest of the band does a fantastic job here as well. Some of the tunes are pretty heavy, complex, like you, what you expect, uh, this type of progressive metal from these guys. Other tunes are a little more atmospheric, some nice soundscapes, mellow. It's all very melodic, really melodic. And Troy actually does a really good job on vocals. I mean, he's really become a good singer here. Uh, and he's got some help on a couple tracks. We got uh, Paul Villarreal on one tune, uh, Eric Roswald on another, uh, some guest keyboards by Bill Jenkins on one tune, and then there's some additional uh, vocals and backup vocals by uh, Luda Arno. So I got some little help here and there. But otherwise, a really cool band. Again, if you, kind of, if you like Zero Hour, Abnormal Thought Patterns and Synthesis, you're going to, of course, love this. I've always loved every, anything the Tipton Brothers have touched, so uh, this is no exception. So, A Dying Planet, very, very cool debut from this band, and a really cool concept album. And like I said, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Seek it out. Okay, we're going to switch to Britain, England, or the UK, whatever you want to call it, for a band who first burst on the scene, I think, I think it was 72 or 73. So maybe it's, I think 73, their debut album came out. This was a band very, very different at the time. They kind of combined like medieval Renaissance type folk and like British folk. And then eventually they'd started to do like, you know, like classic British progressive rock. They started adding these, these symphonic elements to their music. Very, very unique, very British sounding. Of course, I'm talking about Griffin. Uh, but then, and it's G-R-Y-P-H-O-N, so after I think it was five, I believe it was five albums, they released five albums in four years between 1973 and 77, their last album was Treason, then they broke up, never to be heard from again, right? Well, of course not, that's usually not the way these things turn out, so fast forward to uh, 2000, was it 2007 or thereabouts, 2009, something like that, they had announced that they were going to reform, they played a one-off concert with four of the original members, in 2009, and they were they planned to re release an album. It would have been like 30 years since they broke up. They were going to release a new album. Well, that kind of took a long time to come to fruition, and uh, their member uh, Richard Harvey had decided uh, something else came up, and he could no longer continue on with the reunion. So the rest of the founding members of the band, who is I'm going to tell you in a second here. Uh, so we're talking about uh, Brian Gulland, okay. Gullen, Gullen, I forget how he says his name, who plays bassoon, baritone sax, recorders, crumb horn, uh, pestle and mortar, piano and vocalizations. All right, we've got uh, Dave Overly on drums and vocals, and uh, Graham Taylor on guitars and also backing vocals. So what they did was they recorded a couple new guys. We've got uh, Rory McFarlane on uh, electric and acoustic double bass, 
and we've got uh, Graham Prescott on violin, keyboards, mandolin, and a little bit of harmonica. So that now, oh, and also, sorry, Andy Finden on flute and piccolo and uh, all sorts of uh, whistles and uh, what else? Soprano crumhorn, soprano sax, clarinet, and uh, sweetheart fife, or whatever that is. Anyway, uh, this is their reunion album. It's called Reinvention. Let me tell you something, folks. I've always liked Griffin, but they're kind of one of those bands, you know, they only have a few albums and it's been so long. Kind of one of those bands you tend to forget about, right? And a lot of times when you have these like classic, classic bands from the 70s who, you know, break up or people die in the band, they, they, they disappear from the face of the earth and they try to get back together 30, 40 years later. You know, you listen, they, they put out a new record and it's like, it's either pretty damn good usually or it's so different from their classic sound, you tend to be like, eh, not quite the same. Let me tell you something. Reinvention, and I said this on my review on the website, Reinvention is not so much a reinvented Griffin. It is, as far as the lineup goes, you got three original members, three new ones. But this is more like a reacquaintance of an old friend, or to an old friend. This is so much like their classic material, it's, it's just mind-boggling. You know, most of it is very kind of um, acoustic in nature. It's very folky, but the, the songs are so complex uh, that it totally falls into the prog camp as well. Really intricate stuff. You, you got the violins and the fiddles and the, the, the recorders and the clarinets and the flutes, acoustic guitar, some electric guitar, different kinds of basses, keyboards, harpsichords, drums and percussion. About half the tunes are instrumental, the other half have vocals. It's very, like I said, it's very British, very quirky, incredible musicianship on here. You know, if you're, a, if you're watching this show and you're more of a metal guy, but you can appreciate really good, like, instrumental music or just musical stuff that's challenging, even if it's more of an acoustic nature. Like I said, there is some electric guitar in here and electronic keyboards as well. But for the most part, it's more of an acoustic nature, but just dazzling stuff and just so, like, Everything on here is just so cool and fun to listen to. Get your feet tapping it, but you listen to all this dynamic musical passages going on. Incredible stuff. Like I said, it's like if, if you're a fan of the band and you really like their Magic Mushrooms album and their Red Queen to Griffin 3 albums, put those together, that's what you got here. It's like it's 1974 or 5 all over again. Dynamite stuff. I, I can't stress enough how good this album is. Seek it out. All right, Canadian band Cauldron, okay? New Gods, their latest for the end records. Take, get a look at that kind of critter on the front, huh? Pretty damn cool. Uh, these guys, they're like classic metal sounding band, but very accessible. Um, I really like this album and their last album, and I just, I, I love their riffs. The, the, their albums are so well produced. The guitars are just awesome. Nice and crunchy, but classic sounding. It's not extreme metal, okay? It's not thrash. No, it's just it's classic metal. Uh, big riffs, catchy riffs, great guitar solos. The rhythms are tight, really, really good. The vocals are very accessible. I, you know how I, I kind of compare these guys a little bit? They're kind of like a less reliant on image and theatricality ghost. The singer sounds a little bit like um, the lead singer for Ghost, uh, what's Cardinal Copia is the name he's going by now. You know, the guy who keeps changing his, uh, his alias all the time. But um, I, their music is a little bit like Ghost, except like I said, not as kind of pompous, not as like starving for attention, that sort of thing, but very accessible like that. The vocal styles are kind of similar. These guys are a little heavier though, and not less progressive, less theatrical. But I really like this a lot. A uh, really, really good band. A lot of catchy tunes. Like I think a lot of people would really dig this if they would just, you know, discover it and listen to it. So, Cauldron, New Gods. If you have not listened to Cauldron, definitely, definitely investigate them. Okay, a uh, favorite band of mine, Between the Buried and Me. They came out with a uh, the first part of a two-part concept EP series. They've been doing this the last couple of years. Did that with their Parallax releases a couple of years ago. They released, instead of doing one like 70 minute long concept CD, they decided to break it into two like 30, 35 minute EPs, Parallax 1 and 2. They're doing the same thing here. A couple months back, they released Automata 1. Now we've got Automata 2 by Between the Barry and Me. 
first two releases on Sumerian Records. They're no longer on Metal Blade. Very cool. It's basically uh, the concept of this storyline is what if, it's always about a what if, right? Um, you were able to take and record people's dreams and then broadcast those dreams through the internet or the media, TV, radio, however, it's just the media in general. And what are the consequences of that, right? Kind of an interesting, you know, sci-fi slash current uh, storyline there. But very, very good. It's only, uh, there's only four tunes on here. There's, they're pretty long. The guys have been experimenting a little bit uh, these last couple releases. So like you've got some, some added, there's some moments on here that kind of remind me a little bit of like Queen, the 80s Queen, that kind of bombast and what have you. Um, a little bit of David Bowie in spots, but still, you know, got that thunderous, highly technical progressive metal that they're known for. Uh, the dueling, clean, catchy vocals and, and the death metal growls. Crazy guitar work. Crazy. Rhythms are off the chain. Uh, the proverbial bellow is the lead-off track, and that's like your typical uh, between and Barry and me uh, progressive metal. You got a really kind of bizarre tune called Glide, which has accordion, kind of bizarre, but you know something different from the band and the uh, voice of Trespass. And then the last tune is the Grid. Both those last two are pretty long, pretty cool songs. I like it. You know, my opinion is that. It sucks that they, the way they kind of did this, maybe that was the plan, but you know, you release the first part of a concept uh, EP, set of EPs, and then you, the, the fans got to wait like four or five months for the second one. Why not just put them all in one CD and have at it, you know, whatever. But um, playing both together, very, very cool stuff. I dig it. I'm a fan of the band. I'm not afraid to admit it. Okay. Here's a band I had never, uh, never listened to before. The band is called CRCH Church. Right, and what is the name of this bad boy? Hold on a second. I actually kind of like this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Light will consume us all is the name of the latest. I'm just going to call him Church, but it's it's without the U, obviously. This is it right there, folks. And uh, three tunes, epic long tunes. These guys are a doom band. Doom with a lot of atmosphere. Not quite funeral doom. Little bits of Sabbath and very, very early Cathedral. If you like the, the very, very first Cathedral album, okay, kind of similar here. A lot of atmosphere. It's creepy. It's slow. It's really, really heavy. But of course, you've got the extreme vocals and some clean vocals. There's, there's some clean vocals on here as well. But uh, and some of the, the extreme vocals almost go into black metal territory, kind of raspy, screeching, that sort of thing. But thunderous heavy mountains of riffs a lot of atmosphere very very cool album i dig it a lot so again that's church uh light will consume us all again i hope that's how they pronounce it i think it's church but no you like i said before all right i'm going to move over to jazz here the rob dixon trio rob dixon sax player guy's quite good he's been playing the last bunch of years in uh seven string guitar wonder charlie hunter's band so now Charlie kind of does him a favor and says, okay, you're putting out an album, I'll appear on it. So Charlie's here on guitar, also produced the album, Mike Clark on drums. Mike Clark used to play with Herbie Hancock's Headhunters back in the 70s, so he's pretty well named. And then guesting on trombone on roughly half the tracks is uh, Ernest Stewart, Coast to Crossroads. Crossroads, yes, Coast to Crossroads is the name of the album. Here's Mr. Dixon in the back there on his saxophone. It's a really good album. Really good jazz here. It's quite funky. Upbeat and funky. There's no slow nothing going on here. A lot of really cool arrangements. What I find incredible, you know, I've listened to Charlie Hunter before. He's a really good guitar player. He plays a seven-string guitar. And what he does is he picks, he does a lot of the bass notes. So there's no bass player in this in this trio. Or it's almost a basically a quartet. But um, there's no bass here. But he's playing all the bass notes on his guitar. But then he's like comping chords and with some effects. And they sound just like a freaking Hammond organ. It's crazy. There's not a lot of like traditional sounding guitar on here. So you're hearing like the bass notes and then you're hearing these chords that sound like someone's actually playing a Hammond organ. Occasionally he rips into some solos and whatnot, but for the most part, a lot of the soloing is done by uh, Dixon on his sax and on the tunes he appears on, Mr. Stewart on the trombone. But uh, really good, funky stuff. Like I said, upbeat, good melodies. I like it a lot. Really, really good new jazz release. Okay, some live stuff, reissues, and all sorts of stuff here. All right, so this is fantastic. 
you know, two years ago, I was praising Similitude of a Dream by the Neil Morse Band. A amazing album. A great new band from Neil Morse, okay, which includes, you know, Mike Portnoy and uh, Eric Gillette and on uh, guitar and, uh, oh, who else we got here? Uh, what's the, hold on a second. Bill Habauer on keyboards and vocals and Randy George on bass. A fantastic band. It was a great concept album, a two CD concept album that saw Neil and, and the guys playing some really heavy music, almost like progressive metal, but still total prog and compl complex but catchy, great story. Well, they took that to the road, right? They played various places, and of course they made it to Tilburg in the Netherlands where so many classic live albums have been performed and recorded and released over the last decade plus of a lot of the modern uh, progressive bands. So we, here we got another one. It's called The Similitude of a Dream, live in Tilburg, 2017, two CD, two DVD set does not get any better than this folks they run through the entire similitude of a dream album start to finish as well as a uh, couple of extra tunes okay from uh, Neil's recent past it's it's fantastic the guys are obviously having a wonderful time the crowd is loving every minute of it they run through that whole concept concept album flawlessly as good as it is the studio version man I think this is even better it's heavy it's complex, it's melodic, it's catchy, it's just incredible. Neil, great vocals, keyboards, play some ripping guitar too. Mr. Gillette is a fantastic, fantastic guitar hero, I'm gonna call him. He is a guitar hero in the making. He's also a really good singer. Um, the other guy on keyboards is also a great singer, great player. Uh, Randy, uh, wait, did I say Randy George? Yes, Randy George, incredible bass player, and of course, Mr. Portnoy, what can you say? I'm telling you, if you don't have this, go out and get it. Whether you want to sit and watch it or take the CDs and go listen to them on an afternoon drive, whatever. Great, 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 great. Okay, two new live albums by the same band, both from different eras. We're talking about uh, the, the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, the Allman Brothers Band. The first one is a uh, something from the vaults, Fillmore East, February 1970 by, uh, at least from Bear Sonic Journals. This is, of course, this predates the Allman Brothers at the Fillmore, their legendary Fillmore East live album. This, pre this performance predates that, I believe, 10, 11 months, maybe a year, something like that. Uh, it's within a year. So this was February 1970. So they appeared and played, uh, what do we got here? Seven tracks, Little, you know, some similarities with the set from when they appeared uh, later that, you know, the next year, early the next year. So we've got here, this one kicks off with the memory of Elizabeth Reed, uh, nine minutes, 22 seconds. Then we go into Hoochie Coochie Man, 605, that's sung by Barry Oakey. Sorry, Barry Oakley, bass guitarist. Uh, then they go into Statesboro Blues. Then we've got Trouble No More. And then uh, Outskirts of Town, which is a uh, William Weldon, Roy Jordan tune. That was not on the uh, Fillmore East live album, which you all remember. Then a fairly brief at eight minutes whipping post, and then of course a momentous half hour long version of Mountain Jam. Pretty spectacular stuff as you would imagine. Maybe not quite as amazing as the actual Fillmore East uh, at the Fillmore double album that everybody remembers and loves, but not too far removed. The sound is good. I like it, you know. It's uh, it's a it's just the same band, just about a year earlier, playing some of the same tunes, some not. Tune the arrangements are different, but still no less impressive. So um, I like that quite a bit. Just got that actually. Speaking of the Allman Brothers, we got another one for you. So this is uh, Allman Brothers band, Cream of the Crop, 2003 Peach Picks. So these are various recordings from 2003. All right, got four CDs here. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember because it's been a while since so I reviewed this a little while ago and I've just been listening to it. I just got it recently. Um, I don't think any of this, none of the CDs, there's no overlap in any of the songs, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that that is the case. 
So you get basically four CDs of just every every tune's only only played once on here, and it crosses their entire career up to that point, obviously. So you get some stuff from the 70s, 60s, late 60s, the 70s, and of course throughout the 90s and the early 2000s. So um, I mean, you name it, it's on here, right? Ain't wasting time no more. Stand back, Melissa. I'm just gonna go with it's not my cross to bear, black-hearted woman. Don't want you no more. Don't keep me wondering. Done somebody wrong. One way out. Gambler's Roll. Soul Shine. Statesboro Brews. Layla. Mountain Jam. Oh boy, what else? All sorts of stuff. The Memory of Elizabeth Reed. Good morning, little schoolgirl. Who to believe? Stormy Monday. Midnight Rider. Done somebody wrong. I think I mentioned that already. Uh, Dreams, of course. Whipping Post, of course. Wasted Words. Who's been talking? You know, which, uh, in fact, Susan Tedeschi, they have some guest people on here. Uh, Carl Denson shows up on sax on one tune. Susan Tedeschi, you know, from Tedeschi Trucks, that's uh, Dara Trucks' wife. She uh, shows up on one tune. Branford Marsalis plays saxophone on Dreams and Whipping Post. But who's in the band, you might be asking, in 2003? Well, of course, Greg Allman on Hammond, B3 organ, piano, and lead vocals. J Mo on drums, Butch Trucks on drums, Warren Haynes on lead and slide guitar, lead and backing vocals, Mark Quinones on congas and percussion, O'Teal Burbridge on bass, and of course Derek Trucks, lead and slide guitar. This is Dynamite. Four CDs. Almost every Allman Brothers song you'd ever want to hear is played during this. If you you know, if you got to see the Allman Brothers in the last like, you know, twenty years or so, they especially if you live in the New York area, they would play the Beacon Theater. And they would do like a string of shows, like anywhere from three to five to 15, 20 shows in a row over the course of, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever. And they would never play the same set two nights in a row. And they literally would play so much from, from throughout their history uh, over the course of that run. So this is kind of kind of a similar thing. I forget exactly where this was recorded. Let's see if I can find out here. I'll tell you. Ah, venues. Here we go. I knew I'd find this. I'll tell you exactly where all this was recorded from. So Murat Center, Indianapolis, Indiana, July 25th, 2003. The Post-Gazette Pavilion, Pittsburgh, PA, uh, July 26, 2003. Darien Lake Performing Arts Center in Darien Center, New York, uh, August 2nd, 2003. Meadow Music Center, Hartford, Connecticut, on uh, August, um, August 3rd. Verizon Wireless Amphitheater in Charlotte, North Carolina, August the 9th, 2003. And the uh, Altel, Pavilion at Walnut Creek, Raleigh, North Carolina, August 10th, 2003. So basically these are shows, recordings from, uh, what did I say, six, six concerts over the span of, you know, about two weeks or thereabouts. So um, just fantastic, fantastic stuff. Again, that's what it looks like right there. Let's get the whole thing. There we go. Probably one of the strongest lineups uh, of the band, in my opinion. It's just my opinion other than the original. Uh, a great, 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 great band. Love them to death. And, you know, again, still missing Greg Allman, man. What a, what a loss. Anyway, that brings us to Forgotten Favorites. Today we're going to go way back to 1970, a British band who released a string of albums from like 1968, 69 through to the mid-70s before breaking up. I'm talking about the band Freedom. This is their self-titled release. I believe this is their third album called Freedom. What are these guys all about? Well, the drummer and vocalist, whose name is Bobby Harrison, you might remember. He was briefly in the band Procol Harum on their first album, and uh, then left the band, formed this band. And uh, they went from being kind of like a bluesy, folky band and started to turn into more of like a hard rock band uh, along the lines of Cream or say some of the stuff that Jethro Tull was doing at the time, minus the flute, of course. Uh, also in the band at the time, Walter Monaghan on bass and Roger Saunders on guitar with uh, Bobby Harrison on drums and vocals. A really good album. I kind of like this band. They're, like I said, they're kind of bluesy, kind of rootsy, but they, they have a lot of, lot of heft in some of their songs. Some of their tunes are pretty rocking. Like I said, if you like Cream, you like Tull, maybe Blood, Wind, Pig, 10 years after, that sort of thing, I think you'll dig these guys. So they got a bunch of albums. Uh, Angel Air Records, our buddies over at Angel Air, re-released a lot of their stuff uh, a few years back. So Freedom, self-titled, they got a whole bunch of them. Like, like I said, I think they have like six six or seven releases, something like that. They're all pretty good. Uh, I recommend them. I just kind of like, I love that 
hard, British hard rock stuff from the early 70s. Can't go wrong there. So anyway, that's it. 25-minute mark. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. On Facebook, we're on Twitter. And of course, we're here on the mighty YouTube. A lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, just trying to find time to record it all. I hope to get you at least a couple a week, the way we've been going. So uh, if you want to see additional information on these releases, visit the website. You'll see full reviews, and uh, you can check out more stuff from there. But otherwise, make sure you subscribe. If you stumbled upon this today, subscribe. Go check out our vast library. We've got all sorts of uh, videos on here, whether they be product review, new product review shows, or history of this band, that band, or this genre, that genre. I do a lot of rants. We do all sorts of fun stuff on here. So if you got any ideas, things you may want to see, put them in the comments. Uh, I always read the comments. I try to answer a lot of them if you have questions there. So um, anyway, I'm Pete Pardo. We'll see you real soon, guys. Take care. Bye.